I don't remember now. Okay, three, two. Not going to give you the title yet because the title is the name of the theorems, and we'll get we'll get those as we go. So this is three, two. We're going to start with. Uh -huh. Okay, now, as with most theorems that we kind of talked about, there are conditions for both of these today. And the real meat to the problems that we're going to be doing is showing that the conditions are met. The actual math part isn't going to be that bad. We have to make sure that we show and say and tell the conditions are met. So let's start with the conditions of Rolle's theorem. Oh, what? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> First condition for Rolle theorem. F of x must be continuous. Okay, so we've talked about this a lot. Um, you should know the basics, like it, sine of x is continuous, the natural log of x is continuous, x cubed is continuous, and then the thing that's going to be very helpful is that property that says if you add or subtract a bunch of continuous functions, then overall it's continuous. We're going to use that a lot in this section. So our function has to be continuous is the first thing we're going to check. The second thing we're going to check is that it has to be on a closed interval from A to B. So that means we're going to have to check the endpoints and make sure there's a point there, that it's not an open dot at the endpoints. So we'll check to make sure we have points, endpoints. For this theorem to work, it also has to be differentiable on the open interval from A to B, which means you have to be able to take the derivative everywhere between the endpoints. So for this theorem, we can't have corners, we can't have cusps, we can't have vertical tangent lines for this theorem to work. Okay, then the fourth and the final condition is f of a has to equal f of b. So that means that the two endpoints have to have the same y value. So there are the four conditions, and we'll go through showing those in a moment. Yes, well. Mm -hmm. Okay, what that means is that the endpoints have to exist. There has to be something on A and B. It can't be an open dot. Okay. All right, let's actually say what the theorem is now that we have these conditions. If these conditions are met, Then, there is at least one C value between the endpoints where F prime of C Okay, and that last part means the derivative equals zero. So we know with certainty, if these conditions are met, there has to be a spot where the derivative equals zero. Um, that's one situation, yeah. So let's make that our first picture. Let's draw one of these. Years. They always are like perfecting them. Now, this guy named Rolls came up with this theorem. 
Um, so he became pretty famous because he thought of this one. So he probably spent most of his life perfecting this or something like that. Yes, Gina. I don't know. Uh, I don't know my history on this theorem that much. I bet it's in your textbook, though. <laughs> It's like a, well, duh, but someone had to think of that first, yeah. Pretty cool. All right, so let's look at this parabola type shape that John was asking about. Let's make A and B go right here just to kind of visualize this theorem. So let's think about the conditions. Is that function continuous? Sure. Is it on a closed interval? Sure. Is it differentiable everywhere? Why, yes. Are the two endpoints having the same y value? Yes. Okay, so all four conditions are met. That means that somewhere in that graph, there has to be a spot where the derivative equals zero. Can you tell where that is? Oh, it's right there. It's got a little horizontal tangent line going on. Rule theorem works. Okay, I want to give you another picture. Let's go. Like this. Trippy. All right, so is it continuous? Closed interval? Differentiable? F of A equal F of B? We should. Let's <laughs> pretend that I was a good drawer on that one. Is there a spot where the derivative equals zero? Is there more than one? Yes, because the theorem says there's at least one spot. This spot has two of them, where the derivative would equal zero. Okay, now, this is the situation I think Cole maybe first brought up. Continuous? Closed interval, differentiable, yeah. f of a equals f of b, yeah. where does the derivative equal zero? Everywhere. Everywhere. So that one, roll theorem, is every value, every c value between a and b, it's roll theorem, there's a derivative of zero. Okay, what about this one? Continuous? Not, not differentiable. As soon as you find something that's not differentiable, rule theorem's out. So, we're just going to say rule theorem cannot apply because it's not differentiable. It is a cusp. It is, yeah, it's a cusp because they're like rounding it. It's continuous but not differentiable. Correct. So, this one, rule theorem does not apply. What are the questions? What were the three non differentiable the And the vertical tangent line. So it's going to look like um, this. Right at 0, 0, the tangent line is like that. So the slope is undefined. Good question. All right, now, another question coming? Okay. Okay. All right, now let's see what it looks like with like actual function notation. Here's what the question will look like more like in your homework and maybe on your quizzes. Find the x-intercepts of f of x equals x squared minus 3x plus 2 and show, that's the good word of, there's not really a lot of math to do. You're showing your knowledge. F prime of x equals zero between them. a little bit. It won't be totally disappointing for you. <laughs> okay, now, so what they're making us do is they're making us come up with our A and our B. 
they're telling us that our x-intercepts are going to be our interval that we're working on. So how do we find x-intercepts? We factor. We set that original equal to 0. Say some math. A little bit. x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals 0. What's our combo? So then x is going to equal 2 and x is going to equal 1. So our interval is going to be 1 to 2 that we're working with. They won't always make you find your own endpoints, but sometimes they might. Okay, now, here's the part where you're just showing that you know the conditions. So the first condition is that it's continuous. How do I know that is a continuous function? That was a really cool voice throw there, Dina. <laughs> I want you to do the next one. No, I want to Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, so it is continuous because each term is continuous. Okay, so that's good. All right, the next condition was that it was on a closed interval. So that means I need to check that the endpoints exist. So I'm going to do f of 1 and f of 2 and make sure that I get a y value for them. So if I plug a 1 into the original, 0. If I plug a 2 into the original, okay, now guess what? That not only showed that it had a closed interval, it also showed the fourth condition that the endpoints were equal. So I'm going to say over here, closed interval exists and endpoints are equal. So that takes care of 2 and 1. And it will. For this theorem, it will take care of both of those for you. And then the last thing we need to do is show that it's differentiable. Well, the easiest way to do that is show the derivative. So if we derive this, we do get a derivative of 2x minus 3. Okay, so there are our conditions. That's how we kind of show we're smart, we know what Rolle's theorem is. Now we just have to figure out where that c value exists. Where does the derivative equal 0? So, set the derivative equal to 0. Well, there is where it's going to equal 0. Ta-da! Yeah. Oh, not really. <laughs> Any questions you want to ask on that one? All right, let's try another one. And then we'll do the next here. Okay, here's the... Other example problem for this one, we'll say we're going to go with f of x equals x to the fourth minus 2x squared. Find the values of c on the open interval from negative 2 to 2 such that f prime of c equals 0. Let's see if Rolle's theorem is going to work for us even to show that. Is this a continuous function? Sure, x to the fourth is a quartic continuous function. Negative 2x squared is a parabola. So yeah, continuous. Because each term is continuous. Okay, second thing is, do the endpoints exist? So let's check out f of negative 2 and f of 2. Okay, 
What are we going to get when you plug a negative 2 in there? 16 minus 8. What about positive 2? Same thing. So not only do the endpoints exist, but they're also equal. Okay, then last thing we have to do is show that it's differentiable. So if we derive that, we'll have 4x cubed minus 4x. That is a derivative. That works. That's a good derivative. All right, now to show where it's equal to 0, take that derivative, set it equal to 0. Look how they both have an 4x in them. And then look how we get to do difference of squares. So we're going to have three x values. x equals 0, negative 1, and 1. Last thing to do is check to see if those are all in the interval they gave us. From negative 2 to 2, are those in the, that interval? Yeah, so we'll leave those. If it wasn't in the interval, we're not going to put that as an answer because Rolle's theorem doesn't technically prove that that works outside the interval. So we would kind of cross off if it didn't fit in the interval. But that's how we're going to do Rolle's theorem. It's really not that bad. Hopefully you see that. The only bad part about Rolle's is we don't use it continually, so you kind of forget about it. Um, so it's one of those, like, especially on the midterm, it'll be a little bit more fresh in your mind. But, like, when we get to, like, cumulative tests, you, you're going to have to go back and look at this one. It's not going to be hard. It's just going to be one you haven't used a lot. You're going to have to review and that kind of thing. Yeah. We'll see. We might do a project. Oh, uh, Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, let's see the second theorem, which is the mean value theorem. Okay, here's the second theorem for today, the mean value theorem, as opposed to the nice value theorem. <laughs> it's mean as a as a mean average, but. <laughs> then we do the mean value theorem. <laughs> now, this one's a little bit better than rolls because it only has three conditions. So we can work with this. So let's list those conditions. First of all, f of x must be continuous. Secondly, we have to have a closed interval from A to B. f of x must be differentiable on the open interval from a to b. Oh. Thank you. Maybe I forgot to even say the word. <laughs> well, do you notice about these three conditions? It's the same thing except it's least restrictive. Right, f of a does not have to equal f of b. Okay, now let me finish this off, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the comparison. But here, 
is what this theorem says now. If these conditions are met, then there is a C value such that, it just makes it sound important, such that like, its derivative is equal to the slope of the line connecting the endpoint. It's very wordy, but it's not going to be that difficult, I promise. I'm going to save that space to put the formula in, but first I want to draw you a picture. Okay, so the conditions are continuous, closed interval, differentiable. Those are all met. What this wordy part is saying is there is somewhere on that graph where the derivative or slash the slope is the same as the slope of this line. So the line that connects the endpoints, we could call that a secant line if we wanted to, somewhere has the same slope as that. Do you know where? Maybe like right there. Maybe, probably, even right there. Might be a good one. Um, if you want to know, like, business-wise, if you want to know, like, overall your yearly average or something like that, and then find what months you hit exactly what your average was or things like that, could happen in June and August, something like that, just to see where your numbers match up with your average. Hence mean. Okay. Now, here's, here's the formula. Somewhere there is a slope that's equal to that line. Okay, so what we're going to do is put f prime of c. And then how do you find the slope of that middle line connecting the endpoints? You do your old slope formula. f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So this theorem actually has a little formula you have to remember. Um, it's got one less condition, though. So what it's saying, and it's a give or take, so what it's saying is you find the slope of this line just using your good old algebra one slope formula. And you're going to set it equal to figure out where the derivative of a point is equal to that spot. Okay, now we'll go through an example here in a second, just how it would look in your homework. But let me let you in on a secret. Let's go back to Rolle's theorem for a second. So Rolle's theorem, does it meet the three conditions of mean value theorem, continuous, closed, and roll differentiable? The line connecting the endpoints has what slope? So it's saying that somewhere there has to be a slope of zero. Rolle's was pretty much a cheater. He took the mean value theorem, and he gave one specific example of when that could work. He said, well, when the derivative is zero connecting the endpoints, there's got to be somewhere with zero. So I think there could be like a Schrem-Schock um, theorem, somewhere where the slope is one, there's got to be the line of end connecting has to be a slope of one. So Rolle's theorem is just like a special condition of mean value theorem. So they kind of go hand in hand, which is why there was one more condition on Rolle's theorem. The endpoints had to be equal, so you did force that slope to be zero where they were. But that's the same, the same thing. <laughs> I know. 
That's what I mean. I don't know my history on that. I would give him more credit if that were the case. But why didn't you think I mean value theorem? <laughs> so then, if he did come up with it before, then the value theorem would be That's true. But they saw the bigger picture. Yeah. But they didn't even give him a name. Maybe they were embarrassed. They didn't even name the theorem after themselves. <laughs> All right, so let's go through what an example problem might look like here. How might we use this in a computation? Given that f of x equals 5 minus 4 over x, find the values of c on the interval from 1 to 4 that fit the mean value theorem. Okay, first condition, is it continuous? Okay, so 5 on its own, is 5 a continuous function? Sure. 4 over x is one of these deals. Is that always continuous? Oh, where is it going to make it discontinuous? 0. And where are we looking? 1 to 4. So this one, we got to be careful with our explanation. If we say continuous because each term is continuous, that's wrong. Is it the continuous because each term is continuous all that Yes, we're going to say along those lines. Um, sometimes what I put is it's continuous everywhere except x equals 0, which is not on the interval. So the, the people that read it know she's pretty smart. She knows what's going on. Um, just to show them that you're not just blatantly funny. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so, well, <laughs> exactly, I mean, why well, grade the rest of it? So, we'll say it's continuous, all right, it's continuous everywhere, except x equals zero, which is not in the interval. Okay, then the second condition is to show that it's on a closed interval. So we're going to check out f of 1 and f of 4. If we plug a 1 into the original, convenient. 4 is 4. How do you know? All right, so we've got a closed interval. They work. They are not equal to each other. So rules isn't going to work, but eh, we're putting the mean value here. So we've got a closed interval. All right, differentiable. We're going to derive this. This is going to this is going to be one of those interval things because there's going to be part of it that's not differentiable, but we can handle that. So let's derive this. What's the derivative of five? Zero. Now, if you want to get rid of quotient rule, that is really negative 4 x to the negative 1. And we can just do a power rule. Mm -hmm. and now, that is not differentiable everywhere. It's at 0, you can't find the derivative of that. It's undefined at 0. But again, 0 is not in the interval. So we can say something like differentiable on the interval. We want to get that little not on x equals 0 in there. Did somebody, somebody say a question over there? Yeah. This right here? Oh, yeah. 
that two. So when you bring your negative one down, you subtract one from the power. All right, we're ready to do the formula for this one. Okay, so the formula says f prime of c. That means the derivative. We've found the derivative, so that's going to be the one side of our equation, 4 over x squared. Equals, and then we're doing our f of b minus f of a over b minus a. We've got all of those numbers right here. So f of b was this y value minus f of a, which is that y value, over, here's our b and our a. So that's just going to be 1. Not always going to be the case. You're not always going to be that lucky. And then we solve for x. Do a cross multiplying. What's x equal? Plus or minus 2. What is our interval? 1 to 4. So we're going to say 2 is our final answer. At 2, that spot has the exact same slope as the slope connecting our endpoints. And that's how we're going to do mean values here. And that's all there is to this lesson. Well, hey. All right, let's stop there. Yeah, yeah.